Good morning, class. This is Professor Bashman, your Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. There will be a detention issued for the student that hid my Slytherin robes, forcing me to wear this Ravenclaw getup. Could it have been Sophia? Hi. Did you hide my Ravenclaw robes? No. No, wait. You hid my Slytherin robes. Did you hide my Slytherin robes? No. Suspicious. Put Let's take a look at what our awesome. lesson is for today. From Hogwarts, Professor Bashman, your Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, sign up. Welcome back, everybody. This is Mrs. Bashman, and today we are going to be doing the Orchid Sumier painting. This one's very exciting because we're going to learn how to double load with color. So we are going to use our black and our gray ink, just like we had last time. But this time we're going to add three colors, a yellow, and here I've mixed yellow ochre with a little bit of medium yellow, violet or purple, and green. I'm using Viridian green. You can use any of your greens or yellows. It really doesn't matter. So you're going to have five different dishes that we're going to use for this painting. So I'm going to use a medium or large brush. And uh, the reason we do orchid after we do bamboo <clears throat> is that the bamboo teaches us how to do the leaf stamping technique using the edges of the bristles. We're going to use something similar to create petals, but on a smaller scale for the orchid. So that's why you want to use a small to medium brush. You don't want to use a really, really huge brush for this. You can use your smallest brush. It really just depends. I'm going to be using a medium sized brush just so you can see it a little bit clearer on the page. So the first thing that you're going to do is load with green. So I'm loading my brush with green and wiping a lot of the excess off. Just wipe, wipe, wipe until it stops dripping. And you've got a nice point like so. And you're going to roll the tip in violet. So remember, you don't want this to be really, really wet because you don't want it to get absorbed way back into your brush. Ooh, I have a hair. Pull that off of there. It's not coming off. There, I got it. So <clears throat> I know it's hard to see because it's super dark, but it's green with a little bit of violet. And you, if we do this right, we're going to see the both of the colors in the petal. And similar to what we did before, I'm going to lay down the bristles and stamp. There are five petals for the type of orchid that we're going to be doing. I don't want them to be completely straight. I want them to be kind of wiggly. So I'm holding it relatively close, laying the bristles somewhat on their side, and I just kind of stamp. I'm going to do three facing up, and I'm going to do two facing down. So let me pull this up close so you can see. Now, because I was using a medium brush, my uh, petals are relatively large, but do you see how the body of the petal is mostly green and then the tip is violet? Really pretty. So before I do another blossom, I need to wash my brush off really, really well. Clean it, dry it. Get rid of that excess water. Remember, if you don't tap out the excess water on your paper towel, what's going to happen? You're going to get water ghost or corona around your um your blossom we don't want that don't want coronas don't want coronavirus all right wiping off the tip here on our brush rolling the tip in purple i did one blossom up here it's mm, let's do one somewhere down here this time i'm going to have all of my petals facing similar direction kind of like that now, before I do another one, again, I am cleaning my brush, making sure I get all the purple off. It's okay if I still have a little green on there, but I don't want any of the purple because if I let those two mix on the brush, it's going to make a muddy color. We don't want that. We want a pretty, pretty bright flower. One, two. I'm going to do maybe one more down here. There we go. That looks good. So I have three little orchid blossoms for my orchid. <clears throat> Again, remember to keep the negative space around your flowers. You don't want to come too close to the top 
or too close to the sides. You don't want them really in the middle. Just, you know, play around. And I'm using a larger brush. If you're using a smaller brush, obviously your petals are going to be just a little bit smaller. So now we're going to do the stalk of the orchid. And we're going to be using our yellow for that. And we're going to do the stalk from the flower to the ground. And it's a very thin stalk, so I'm holding it, the brush upright. I'm using the tip, and I'm going to have the, the stalk be relatively thin. I'm going to kind of wiggle it down. I'm not going all the way to the bottom of the page. Now these side flowers, I'm going to take the stalk and swoop it around and hook it onto the stalk like that. It's fun. It's pretty. It has a little wiggle. And <clears throat> you'll notice, here, let me turn my brush off and then I'll bring it closer so you can see. So you notice how my stalk, oh no, come back. There we go. My stalk here on my little branch. See how it swoops over like that? All right. Now I'm going to switch to my small brush. I'm going to pick up some black. Wipe off the excess so I got a nice tip. Don't want it to be too, too splitted. And I'm going to do a little wiggle kind of shape on the bottom of my iris right there. That's the sepal, that, that bud that holds it onto the stalk. And then when the flower blooms, it opens up. So it's just got a little bit of a, a wiggle there. And then down here, I'm going to start wiggling around with my brush. I want it to split and look really rough and rocky. Because iris or irises, I'm sorry, orchids grow on really rocky soil and they have this kind of wonky looking root system. So <clears throat> I'm just creating the impression of that rocky ground. Now I want to do some leaves for my orchid. So I'm going to switch back to my large brush. And similar to the strokes that we've done before, where we're varying the pressure like we did on bamboo where we did on its side and we press lift press here we're going to do a variation of press and lift so i'm going to load my brush with some black i'm going to do two maybe three leaves <clears throat> and the leaves for orchid start at the flower and they go almost as tall as maybe the flower maybe even taller so i'm going to press and lift and press and lift as I go up, and you see how that makes the, the leaf look like it's turning and twisting? It varies the shape of the leaf. I do that. Let's see, let's do one that's like overlapping the stalk, maybe. Maybe it's kind of folded over like that. I'm going to clean my brush off, get some really light gray, maybe do some ghostly looking leaves you don't want too many leaves this this one is very easy to go too big i'm already really close to the edges of my paper so this one you have to practice like condensing it in as you can see it, it gets real big real fast hmm let's go over here Trying to decide where to put another petal. I probably did too many leaves, but whatever. That's okay. It's really crowded. So, <clears throat> Orchid shows you how to double load with color and how to use color in your paintings. All right, so remember, you're going to practice three of these on your newsprint, take photos of them, and then upload them to your Artsonia page. All right, thanks.